All right, guys, welcome back. So we're doing at 20 minutes. We're gonna do 10 now. So it's gonna be good and it's gonna be quick. All right, if I can have attention. Let's start simple. When you think of the metaverse, All right, are there waters? what image do you see? I want you to actually imagine like right now, like what that actually looks like to you. Cause I think a lot of people have a different concept of what a metaverse is. There was a table set about To some people, it's probably some kind of utopia where anything is possible. You can be whoever you want to be. There's no shortage of resources because anything is possible. But when you talk to anybody who might be not as pro tech, they might be thinking of this, a place where we kind of drug ourselves when we finally give in to the matrix and say, hey, you know, this thing that we're building, do we actually want this thing? Uh, to a lot of people, the metaverse sounds scary. To yeah. some people, it's the most amazing thing. So the question is, you know, which is it? Is the metaverse the blue pill where we actually drug ourselves in Wonderland as we've been predicting for years and years and years, but somehow we're embracing it with open arms? Or is it actually the red pill that allows us to be more of ourselves anywhere in the world, any point in time with whoever we want to be? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. But so the question is, which pill do you choose? Do you want the truth or whatever's comfortable? Truth. Color? Which pill? All right, we watched The Matrix. Awesome. You chose the red pill, because if you chose the blue one, I wouldn't have slides for that. So, so here's the truth. Oh, next slides. Oh, yes, there's been slides. I'm sorry. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, this is embarrassing. Yes, next slide. So this was the utopia, right? All right. And one more. Next slide. That's, that was the dystopia. All right, I think the image was important. All right, now we know. Next slide. There are the pills. All right. <laughs> next slide. You chose red pill. All right, next slide. I think we're getting it now. Awesome. Well, here's the thing. The truth is the metaverse is not coming. The metaverse is already here, whether we like it or not. The one thing we have in our control though is whether or not it will be the dystopia that we fear or that potential utopia that could be. Because the truth is we've already lived in metaverse 1.0. Right, the metaverse sounds like a cool new buzz phrase. A lot of people say metaverse, and most people have no clue what the hell a metaverse even is. Right, it's like blockchain in 2017. You say it, it makes a company sound cool, but nobody really knows what it means. The truth is metaverse 1.0 has already existed for the last two decades. Right, we're looking at things like social networks, video games, movies. Next slide. Because the truth is, over the last 20 years, we're spending more and more and more time in digital worlds. The average human already now prefers the metaverse over the physical world. Sounds uncomfortable, sounds unpopular, but it's the actual statistical truth. We're spending more hours on social media, we're spending more hours playing video games, we're spending more hours consuming TV. Because at the end of the day, what is a social network? It's a virtual collective that's not actually physically there. What's a video game, right? It's an alternate reality that you play in. The graphics might not be fully immersive. Yes, you don't feel it on your skin yet, but you're still leaving the physical reality to enter a new one. And when it comes to movies, you know, a lot of us, right? The truth is a lot of us know the characters of our favorite movies better than our own, own neighbors. Equally, we care more about the clothes we wear on Instagram than we, the clothes we wear when we go out on the street to grab the mail. So somehow already today in 2021, without all the fancy, you know, open metaverse, we're already living in it. We might not acknowledge it, but we do. Next slide. And, but here's a problem. Metaverse 1.0, while it might already have us in control, the problem is it's centralized. It's siloed and it's not community driven. And if you want to know what that looks like, I mean, just look at the picture. You know, you have your suck overlord. Everybody's going to wear the Oculus, which Oculus is, was bought by Facebook. Facebook just rebranded to Meta. I mean, it's not even cute anymore. It's like it's straight up, you know, it's called Meta, right? So they're building the open metaverse. There's no conspiracy. Facebook is now called Meta. They own Oculus, the biggest v VR company. So the thing is, that's the direction we're going. So next slide. 
But before we go deeper into, and that's a fantastic idea, um, before we go into exploring the divide between the open and the centralized metaverse, let's address the simple question that 99.99% of people are probably too afraid to ask. Next slide. What even is the metaverse? Next slide. The metaverse is the digitally native world. Right, like how is the metaverse different from, let's say, the internet, right? P people might say, oh, it's just another fancy word of rebranding the internet over and over and over, but it's different. When we talk about Web2, we're, we're talking about providing digital services that help us enhance the physical reality. Whereas the metaverse is a digitally native world where we have digitally native communities, right? DAOs, for example. You have digitally native contents, like commodities, goods, right? NFTs, ERC20s. You have digitally native hierarchies and values. Again, there might be hierarchies digitally for the first time using decentralized autonomous organizations. And laws of order of nature. Here's a cool thing, in a fully digital world, the regular laws of nature don't have to apply, right? There can be different rules in Decentraland, Insomnium, and so forth. Next slide. And to give you a couple examples, right, what that actually looks like, Web2 versus Web3. In fashion, for example, when we use Web2, it means that you're using an e-com store, right? You use the internet to sell what? Physical goods, right? So it's an auxiliary tool. Whereas with Web3 and the metaverse, you're not selling, you don't have to sell physical goods anymore. You can be selling completely, purely digital fashion that can be worn in digital worlds, that can be sold, transferred, and if you want to, secondarily, it can be made into physical goods as well. With real estate, you know, we use pl platforms like Zillow to list physical real estate. Again, Web2. With Web3, there's completely digitally native land that can be owned, rented out to others, meaning it's a source of income. It can be leased, it can be sold. Again, where well, you have companies like, you know, Nike and so forth, you know, buy buying plots in Sandbox, Decentraland, you name it. Why? Because there's attention. Why do people care about real estate? eyes, people walking by, digital real estate is real. You don't want to believe that digital real estate is real? What do you think of Facebook ad is? Two minutes? All righty, we'll go fast then. So communities, you guys know what a community is. All right, next one. Um, next slide. So why now, okay? So the thing is, why do people all of a sudden care about the metaverse? It's pretty simple. We have a perfect storm of innovations. Number one, you have ERC-20 tokens where any metaverse can launch their own assets. Number two, you have fully flush financial, mar financial markets with DeFi. If I start a virtual world today, I don't need to start a bank. I could just use the already existing platforms like, for example, RGT, Rari Capital, that allow me to make money markets from day one. We can use decentralized autonomous organizations to govern itself. If I want to create a virtual world before a game, it would be very hard for me to create governance structures. Now I just launch a DAO and we can have the users, the gamers, actually govern itself. And we have goods and services with NFTs. Before, if I made a game, nobody knew would know how many swords exist, how many homes exist, how much land exists. Now they're actually tradable, transactable, and so forth. And finally, we have VR, AR making leaps and bounds. And just to put that in numbers, next slide. You know, you see the, the Cambrian explosion, DeFi on one hand, has grown from like $2 million using it, essentially, in 2020, to now $250 billion using it. We saw NFT volumes go from, I think, I, I think OpenSea made $600,000 in revenue last year, it's made $300 million this year, right? NFT volumes are going through the roof. Next slide. One minute, yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. Uh, and then when it comes to VR, AR, you also see the slope steadily, steadily increase, right? So there's more than over a million headsets being sold every single quarter. Next slide. So how big could this world be? Next slide. Next slide. The simple math for me is that the, the metaverse will be bigger than the physical world, okay? So why, let's just skip two slides. Okay, there we'll go, this is five final notes. Um, why does it matter that who wins, right? In a central metaverse, the consumer is the product. In an open metaverse, the consumer owns the product. In a central metaverse, the consumer is governed. In an open metaverse, the consumer governs. In a central metaverse, the consumer is controlled. In an open metaverse, the consumer is in control. And this is why it matters, because our future literally depends on it. Next slide, it's gonna be final one. And that's why, you know, Harvard Metaverse Ventures is happy to announce it will be raising and deploying over $100 million into building an open metaverse in the coming years. So if you've found this space, let's work together. Thank you.
Awesome.